Welcome back to the little camera Z-targeting Zelda mini-series. In the first episode we covered how we could change our camera adjustment like this and in the last episode we went over how we could target on things. So in today's episode I'm going to be going over how we can target things, tie it all together with our first system, and how we can um, ensure that once we're targeted onto something we don't switch targets. So if you're interested in this, stick around. So when we think about this and break it down, there are three states possible. There's the default camera state, which is what we're looking at right now. There's this state, where the camera is looking behind us or being readjusted. And there's the locked on state. So if we go back into our camera chip, we can see we have two states set up and obviously we're going to need to set up a third one. The third one is going to be the exact state that we set up in the previous episode. So I'll go ahead and pull that in. So here we have the default camera state, the reline camera state, and the targeting camera state. In order to get these multiple states working, we're going to have to change the logic inside of this microchip, which I'll go ahead and label. I've labeled this determined camera state because this is where all the logic lies to adjust the camera state. So we still have the L2 value coming in here, and this is on a 0 to 1 signal manipulator. But we're going to have to use some extra logic to determine what our state should be in when this happens. So by default, we're still in the normal state, and that's fine. The B state is what we already had set up, which is just the realigning ourselves, And the C state is when there are enemies nearby that are targetable, and we press L2, then C will happen. I've pulled out the infamous old evil red block here, and this is going to act as our enemy. And I'll go ahead and stamp a microchip on this. In order to detect enemies that are targetable, obviously we're going to want to have some sort of range. I don't think we're going to want to be able to detect enemies through walls or from very far away, so we're going to have to take some precautions into account in order to uh, manipulate this so that it behaves the way we want it to. Regardless of what happens, I still think it's a good idea to have a tag inside of our enemies. Whether they're always on or not is up to us. And I'd also like to set up another tag, and this will be for the little arrow thing that kind of highlights which enemy we would be targeting if we were to switch states. So I've labeled this enemy target highlight, and that will be there. So if I were to get a cone out, and let's go ahead and make this smaller, something like this. Now we can color this thing, I don't know, maybe like a bright yellow, and maybe give it some glow. So let's just say, for example, we had this thing on here, and we wanted it to teleport to the enemy highlight position. Then when we start time, you could see this is like a kind of indicator to the player that if we were to press L2, we would target onto this enemy. So how we set this up really depends on what the gameplay is going to be like. If we're going to have a ton of enemies spawned right from the very beginning, then obviously we aren't going to want to have a bunch of tags on all at the same time. However, if the enemies kind of spawn around the player, and we don't spawn too many, then it's not really that big of an issue. Just to be safe, I might as well use the label, so I'll go ahead and use the faux label on these enemies, and this will power the tag and the other logic. So I'll go ahead and put both of these tags inside of this chip, and when the thing is not being detected, these tags are not active. So we'll come back to this enemy stuff, but for now we have something in place, now we can go ahead and play around with how this camera state changing is going to work. I'll get a trigger zone out, and it's going to look for that faux label. Now in order to keep all of this neat and not messy with a bunch of wires coming in and out of everywhere, I'm actually going to unplug this from the active port, and instead of using one selector, we'll use two. One selector will be for when there are enemies nearby, and the other will be for when there are not. 
So if we power this when there are enemies nearby, and we power the other one when there are enemies not nearby, this way we can have better control over what we're doing. So if I have either of these things, the A ports, power this, this sets the camera state to zero. So when there are not enemies nearby, and we press L2, this port will be active, and we want to set camera state to 1. Now, if we have a camera state that's continuously powered, as long as we're not near any foes, what we can do is take the output of the active port and plug that into here. We can see the camera state over here, by the way. And if we're ever not getting a value from B, then we can switch back to A. So we can see if I hold L2, we switch to 1, camera state 1, and if I let go, we go back to 0. Now, if we ever are near foes, this will be off. So when I press L2, this bottom selector isn't doing anything. And this is when we can switch to this B port, which will be for our lock-on. Okay, so I've cleaned this up a little bit. So I have this default to readjust selector set up. And that should all be working according to plan. And now we just have to get this default to target thing to work correctly. So like I said before, we want to be able to break out of the targeted state back to the default state. And there are two things that come to mind. If we're in the targeted state and we press L2 again, we'd like to switch back. Also, if we're in the targeted state and we get far enough away from the enemy that we're targeting, I think we should break off of the targeted state. With that being said, let's go ahead and take it one step at a time. Let's just start with the L2 toggle. So obviously, if we're ever in this B state, we do want to switch this camera state to the value of 2. However, we have to take something into account here. This thing, setting it back to 0, is active whenever the trigger is not being held, which is not what we want to happen. So, one easy way to deal with this is an exclusive gate. I'll get two out, and I'll name them both the same thing. Name these targeting. I'll plug this into here, and I will plug this into here. This active port will go into this power, and this active port will go into this power. So, by default, nothing's really changed here. But if I change this to have a higher priority than the other gate, we can see now when I press L2, it switches the state to the value of 2, and then when I let go, it stays on. But now I want to be able to toggle back. How do we do that? To avoid this from getting super messy really fast, I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff into a microchip. So I'll plug B into this node, and that node will go into here. So again, it still works. But now what I'm going to do is I will pass this into a pulsed signal manipulator, and that will go into a counter like so. I'm now going to set the counter to 2, and so we can see when I press L2, that turns this on. Now I'm going to get one more node out here, and this is going to be for our L2 signal. And so if this is ever the active gate, and we press L2, then we want to increase this, and we're going to want to signal when this is done. This will reset the counter, and this output node will then go back into A. I'll also plug the counter full into the close gate signal. So now we can see if I press L2, the enemy is close enough by the way, so there are foes nearby. If I press L2, this switches the camera state to 2, the counter is increased by 1, and now this signal is coming in is true. So if I press L2 again, it resets the counter, closes the gate, and sends a signal back to this A port, and now we're back at the camera state being zero.
I can now clean these wires up so that they look nice. And while I'm cleaning this up, let me just say, if this is, if I went too fast or if this is confusing, um, please let me know. I'd be happy to help explain further, um, either, you know, privately or in a comment, um, whatever you prefer. With that being said, if any of this is too complex or confusing, also let me know. I'd be happy to help explain further. Now that I've done all this, let me show you how this works. So we're not near any foes. You can see the trigger zone is, is off. The foes all the way over there. If I press L2 and hold L2, it does this camera reset readjust thing. Now if I'm close to this thing and I press L2, um, it will switch to that state. And this is currently not working because I don't have the midpoint object set up. But we can see that it's stuck in this. I'm not holding L2. And if I press L2 again, we switch back to our default state. OK, with all that legwork done on the state and the whole camera thing, all we have to do is adjust our enemies so that these things have the midpoint value. And then we'll have to wait till the next episode to do some of the extra bells and whistles because this is running a little bit too long here. So again, I'm going to just create the middle point, midpoint uh, object here. I'm going to use the same technique I used in the last one, where I transmit both the enemy position and the player's position through wireless transmitters. This one object receives both of those values and calculates the midpoint. By the way, this is another way we could do this. We can see here that if we plug both of these in, when we do this blend, it actually gets the average between the two values. So if we po put both of them into the port A and multiply it by 1, that's essentially the same thing as adding them together and dividing by 2. If the other way is more comfortable with you, that's totally fine. I was just showing another possible way we could do this. Just one less gadget, kind of a neat little trick, hack, whatever you call it. Again, I've created this tag, camera target position, which I'm going to place on top of the object. And now if I set this to not collidable and I start time, we can see that this thing goes between the player and the object. It's actually going between this point here, which is in the head, and this point here, which is in the center of that object, which is why it's kind of lifted a little bit. I'm also going to set the speed on this follower to the max, and now we can make this thing not visible and not glidable. So it will always be running, even when a enemy tag isn't sending anything, but it doesn't really matter. So here we can see that if we're far enough away from the enemy, we can do our little readjustment camera thing. But if we get close enough, then when we lock on, the camera follows the midpoint between the player and the block. And there's two ways to get out of it. If I press L2 again, then it goes back to normal. Or if I run far enough away, then it breaks out of the targeted state. And again, to sell the lock on effect, if this camera state is ever two, then we can turn on a look at rotator, which is looking at the enemy tag. So now when we lock on, the player faces the enemy. And of course, if we ever run away, then we can break out, or we can always break out as well. The last thing I want to do really quickly for this episode is cover how we're going to have more than one of these enemies. One way we can go about doing this is, let's say we have a laser scope. Remember, this chip is only on if we're close enough to this, so it's not really a thermo concern. Let's have it point at the player. I don't care about the distance. It really doesn't need to be any larger than our actual trigger zone, but I'll just leave it at max for now, and I'll make it look for the friend label. So this laser scope is going to hit the player, and we're going to use that in addition to the hit distance to determine which enemy is the one being targeted. So I'm going to use a, ex an exclusive gate here. And this active port will only turn this on if this gate is active. Now I want to take the hit distance from the laser scope. And I want the laser scope that is hitting the player and has the smallest distance to have the highest priority. So I'm going to take the hit distance and plug it into the signal manipulator. And I'm going to go into this custom remapper and click invert output. 
I'm then going to take that and plug it in on a modulate against the priority. So if this one is active, that will turn this enemy position on, and only one of them can be on at a time. So if I have two of these out here, the one that I'm closest to is the one that we are targeting. If I get closer to this one, we can see that we're targeting this one. Now, as of right now, if I move over here, then this one turns on. And so it kind of sw switches back and forth, and I don't want that. So to avoid them switching, I'm going to get a keyframe out, and I'm going to turn on freeze output. And what I'm going to do is I'll get the camera state variable, and if it's ever on 2, then we will turn this on. That way, when we're locked onto this enemy, but we get closer to this one, this other tag won't be the one that we're targeting. So now we can see if I'm far enough away, I can do this little camera readjustment. And if I get close, I can target one. And once we're targeting that one, it doesn't break, even if I get closer to the other enemy. I can always cancel out and maybe target this one instead. And obviously, there needs to be some sort of indicator on which one we're targeting and which ones we can target. But I'll be going over that in the very next episode, in addition to some other cool little things we can add, like a, an extra target reticle and how we can switch between the enemies. So if you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here and you like this kind of stuff and want to see more, please click subscribe. I've got a lot of cool tutorials coming out. Again, any questions you have, uh, or confusion or anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to read it and interact with y'all. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe, and I'll see you next time.